Greetings and welcome back to Junior English. We are working now with Walt Whitman's Song of Myself, and I'm with you on, on page 428. And we're going to look now at what some have argued is the most important passage of all of Song of Myself, and some have even said of all of, all of the poems that Whitman ever wrote, because it's here that we're going to really get to the very heart of why he called his collection of poetry Leaves of Grass. Now, of course, if you were with us in an earlier session, we talked at level uh, or at poem one about his mention of a spear of summer grass. But now we're going to get we're going to get the, the full the full uh, um, shot of his views on grass. I'm with you now on 428, and let's read passage six together. Okay, a child said, "What is the grass?" Fetching it to me with full hands, how could I answer the child? I do not know what it is any more than he. I guess it must be the flag of my disposition out of hopeful green stuff woven. Or I guess it's the handkerchief of the Lord, a scented gift and remembrance are designately dropped bearing the owner's name some way in the corners that we may see and remark and say, whose? What do you think has become of the young and old men? And what do you think has become of the women and children? They are alive and well somewhere. The smallest sprout shows there is really no death. And if ever there was, it led forward life and does not wait at the end to arrest it and cease the moment life appeared. All goes onward and outward. Nothing collapses. And to die is different from what anyone supposed and luckier. Now I want to point out right away that Whitman is going to do something quite remarkable at the beginning of this little poem. Notice, you can exegete on your own at level one. Go ahead and do it and write down really quickly what happens at the beginning of the poem. Well, notice, it's not an adult that comes to him, is it? It's a kid, right? A child comes up to him, maybe at the park. Why is it that children have the ability to ask the really important questions? The kid picks up some grass and says, hey, dude, what is this? Which is really funny if you think about it. We live our whole lives now that we are all big and grown up. And there aren't any surprises anymore. We already know everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's grass, dude. Drop it, it's nothing. No, that's not how Whitman responds. In a moment, he accepts that even as an adult, he doesn't know how to respond. This will take us, of course, forward to the passage we were working with before from passage 46. You're asking me questions. I hear you. What is it he says? I answer. I cannot answer. You must find out for yourself. Notice that in this passage, and by the way, the full passage of passage 6 is not provided for you here in your anthology. You can read it and Google it and read it online easily. He goes through a process of saying all the different things that grass might be. It is the great, you can write it this way, unifier. It's the great symbol of America because it's the great symbol of democracy. Grass is everywhere. All different kinds of grass. Of course, when you're eating bread, you maybe haven't realized you're eating grass, aren't you? Right? That's what you're doing. Funny, funny to think about. When you eat a Big Mac, the bread came from grass, and the Big Mac meat came from a cow that ate grass. Oh. Dude, now that you say that, the stuff that grows out of the earth, it's kind of like way important because if you don't have trees, you don't have photosynthesis, and that means you ain't got no air. The stuff that grows out of the earth is what makes us alive. And for Whitman, that is a remarkable miracle. He says to the kid, dude, I can't really, I can't give you a totally great answer. But notice he says, there's something interesting about grass. It comes from where? The ground. Well, what do we do with people who have died? We put them in the ground. And then what grows over them? More grass. Now that's interesting. In other words, grass reminds us there is no death. <laughs> right? There's no death. You are walking now. Someday you won't be. Then you are buried under the ground. What grows out of the ground right above you? Grass. That is to say, there's still life, even in your death. And for those of you who are Disney Lion King fans, you know this is the great circle of life, isn't it? We're going to see that with that idea recapitulated often, of course, in poets and, and in writing. Whitman will finish by making some interesting observations about death. Why fear death, he asks. Death is a part 
of our existence. It is a part of our life. Let grass teach you something about dying. Funny thing, in the winter, your yard looks dead. Agreed? But then guess what happens? It comes back. And now, all of a sudden in the spring, summer, it's green? But we know what's going to happen. This is the way life works. It's this circular kind of understanding. He will finish by saying, all of the people who are dead and buried under the ground, which is interesting when you think of all the billions and billions of people that have lived on this planet who are now under the ground. Where you're sitting, somebody possibly died and went back to the dirt and was there. No way for you to know. Oh, that's freaky. Whitman says, that is not freaky. That, if that's freaky at all to you, it's only because you haven't thought about the fact that you are walking grass. You are walking dirt. You don't get to do this thing at the park forever. Sooner or later, you got to go bye-bye. And guess what? Grass tells us something about what happens next. Look, the smallest sprout of grass shows there is really no death. These lines have been read often at funerals to give people comfort. Notice he says, And if ever there was death, it led forward life and does not wait at the end to arrest it. There is no dying of life. Life keeps going on and on and on. All goes, how Whitman says it, onward and outward. Nothing collapses. There is no end. There is no finish. This evolutionary view important. To die is different from what anyone supposed. And then, of course, the radical and luckier. That is to say, life is beautifully lived when you appreciate how beautiful death is because it's a part of our existence. It is not something to be feared. It is not something to be avoided. It is something to be embraced. Well, let's jump to 3A really quickly. What is for you your favorite text where somebody learns that he or she is going to die and it completely radically changes his or her life? completely changes the way he or she lives. All of a sudden, a certain potentiality of mortality hits them. They're told by a doctor. They're put in some kind of circumstance. And all of a sudden, they start living totally different. Why? Because what they knew all along, you don't get to stay at the park forever, becomes fully aware for them. And it changes everything about who they are and how they live their life. Let's think 3B for a second. What are your views of death and dying? Does Whitman's ideas about grass give you any comfort that even though you love the park, you cannot stay at the park forever? You've got to go to the van, and you went when you were a kid, kicking and screaming, just one, five more minutes, one more swing. Come on, I want to stay for a little while longer, but sooner or later you got to go. And yet, it's in that moment that you realize that, that you appreciate what it is to be at the park and to have the experience of life. All goes onward and outward. Nothing collapses. Death never ends anything. It's the continuation of life. And in the end, it is such a beautiful experience that Whitman's going to call it lucky. Lucky to be alive because you get to recognize the beauty of your existence. Well, there you go. An introduction to Whitman's Passage 6. Thank you.